Hello, Mishpucha. It's Courtney, America's Jewish Mother. Welcome back to my channel, and I am back with a Friday Reads video. Um, so I actually finished two books this week, and I am currently reading four books. <laughs> I can't count. All right. Good thing I don't teach math. Um, anyway, so let's get into the books I finished. So the first book I finished this week was an audiobook that I had been listening to. This was um, Idioma Alua's nonfiction book, so you want to talk about race. I really liked this. Um, I ended up giving it four and a half stars. Um, and yeah, I just found it really compelling, um, and it challenged me in a number of ways, um, which I think is good. Uh, all of the chapters are set up, I think I said this last week, in the form of a question. By the way, sorry for the squeaking in the background, that's Char telling me I should pay attention to her and play with her instead of doing this video. Uh, so sorry about that. Um, so all of the chapters, like I said, are set up in the form of a question, like, what is cultural appropriation? Or why can't I say the n-word? Or what is the school to prison pipeline? Etc. Etc. Um, and then throughout the course of the chapter, Alua addresses um, that topic uh, in a way that is you know, at times poignant and also at times humorous. Um, she also injects her own experiences uh, into the into the text sometimes. Um, and yeah, like I said, I just found it really good and compelling. Um, the audiobook narrator, Bonnie Turpin, did a great job. Um, and yeah, I really liked it. I would definitely recommend it, especially if you have an interest in anti-racism literature. Um, the only, the only thing that kept me from giving it like the full five stars is I kind of wish it had included more data and statistics, um, but that's sort of a personal preference. Um, but otherwise, like I said, I, I really liked it. I found it um, equal parts compelling and also challenging. Uh, and I do like a book that, you know, challenges me to think differently about things um, than I have previously. So yeah, really good. Um, and this is a, this is going to be a trend of I'm super enjoying my nonfiction reading this week. Um, so that was the first book I finished. The second book I finished this week was Franz Kafka's The Complete Stories. Um, so this is a collection of all of Kafka's shorter fiction and also one play, fun fact. Um, so it's everything except his books, his novels, The Trial, The Castle, and America. Um, so these are, this includes both published, both works that were published within Kafka's lifetime and works that he left unpublished and in various states of completion um, upon his death. And I said this last week, but you can kind of tell uh, a difference between the published and unpublished works. Um, this is not the case for all of them, but I did for the most part find it to be the case that the works that were published within Kafka's lifetime felt more complete and fully realized than the unpublished ones. Um, again, that wasn't the case across the board, but for the most part, I found that to be the case. Um, and, you know, because this is a collection of stories, you know, obviously not all of them are going to be great and not all of them are going to hit you in the same way um, as they hit me or as they would hit somebody else. Um, but I do think there is a lot in here to ponder over and... Um, and to take an interest in. I particularly enjoyed the stories, The Metamorphosis, which I had not, I mean, I knew the premise of it, but I don't, I don't think I'd actually read it start to finish before. I really enjoyed that one. I also really enjoyed In the Penal Colony, A Hunger Artist, and A Report to an Academy. All of those, I feel like, really kind of encapsulate what that term Kafka-esque refers to, um, and they're in some ways disturbing and in also some ways um, challenging. So yeah, I would definitely recommend those. Um, this also has a long series of, of very short stories that range from four to five pages in length to a single paragraph. Um, and those were sort of more of a mixed bag for me. So, you know, there are some of them that, that read like parables or fables, um, those I kind of liked actually. And then there are others of them that, you know, are just sort of seem like kind of in various stages of, of completion again. Um, but I did want to read you my favorite of the very short stories. This is called A Little Fable. 
Alas, said the mouse, the world is growing smaller every day. At the beginning, it was so big that I was afraid. I kept running and running, and I was glad when at last I saw walls far away to the right and left. But these long walls have narrowed so quickly that I am in the last chamber already, and there in the corner stands the trap that I must run into. You need only to change your direction, said the cat, and ate it up. Um, so yeah, that's that's definitely my favorite of the little fables, so if that interests, or the little stories. Um, so if that interests you, or you have any sort of interest in Kafka's work, I would definitely recommend this collection. I ended up giving it 3.75 stars. Um, so yeah, like I said, I liked it overall, enjoyed it. Not all of the stories were winners, but I think you're going to get that pretty much in any collection of stories, um, but would definitely recommend it if you have an interest in Kafka. Um, oh, I should also add here that most of the stories were translated by from the German by Willa and Edwin Muir. And some of them were also translated by Tanya and James Stern, and it, the translators indicated following every single story, um, or every individual story in the collection. So yeah, um, that's the other book I finished this week. So in terms of what I am currently reading, uh, Lindsay of Lindsay's Book Life and I are still doing our buddy read of Anne Petrie's The Street. I am over 250 pages into this, and it's still enjoyable and engaging and interesting and, you know, not totally sure what's going to happen. Um, elements, different elements keep getting introduced into the plot and you're like, okay, well, what's going to happen now? Um, so yeah, still interesting, still enjoying this. And then I am also still reading Colson Whitehead's The Underground Railroad. I'm about three quarters of the way through this. I will absolutely finish this over the weekend um, because I have to post the last of, of the, you know, the quizzes and discussion post questions for my students for the last uh, section of this book, so I will certainly finish this in the next week. Um, and I am enjoying my reread of this, but I, I feel like I'm not quite, I don't find the character of Cora, who's the main character in this story, I don't find her quite as compelling, and I don't feel as invested in her as I really want to feel, um, but otherwise I am still enjoying my reread of this. And then um, my nonfiction November reads, I am still reading William Derisowitz's Excellent Sheep, uh, which I am still enjoying and finding um, a compelling and engaging read. I think I put this down for like legitimately a full week <laughs> before I picked it back up again, but that's partially because I, I got really distracted by the next book I'm going to talk about. Um, but I am still really enjoying this, and I find that it has a, a narrative style to nonfiction that I really um, that I really like and find engaging. Um, and then the last book I'm currently reading, which I legitimately read over 100 pages of this yesterday, is Ezra Klein's Why We're Polarized. Um, so I am over 130 pages into this. It's really good. <laughs> so basically... Um, in the first half of the book, because uh, I'm, I'm about at the halfway point right now, Klein talks about the various psychological factors that cause us to become politically polarized and how we have also tied our politics to our personal identities in a way that didn't necessarily used to be the case before. Um, and that even though we are more polarized now, in a way, it's much more clear what uh, the individual parties, Republican, Democrat, Libertarian, Green Party, whatever, um, it's much clearer what those parties represent and stand for than it was in, you know, even as, as recently as the... Um, you know, 19, 1950s, 60s, 70s. Um, and yeah, so it's really good. I really love books that tell me about human nature and psychology and why we're all so messed up. So, <laughs> so I've really been enjoying this. Um, it's pretty data heavy. I mean, it's, it's, not, uh, it's not overly data heavy, but he does reference, Klein does reference a lot of studies that have been conducted over time um, to make one point or the other about our our sense of identities and how those have shaped our politics and how that's also led us to become more polarized. Um, but yeah, I really like this. So um, like the William Derisowitz book, I find that it has a very engaging narrative style that I've like really gotten into. And again, I read 
legitimately over 100 pages of this yesterday, so clearly I'm enjoying it and finding it compelling. So um, I will probably finish this in the next week. I will certainly finish The Underground Railroad, and I may uh, also finish William Dreisowitz's Excellent Sheep. So that is everything that I've either finished reading or I'm currently reading. Um, so I would love to hear your thoughts about any of these books. Please feel free to leave me a comment down below. I would also love to hear what y'all have been reading and enjoying this week. So I hope everyone is staying healthy and well. I hope you're doing good reading whatever you're reading. And until next time, would it kill you to call your mother?